So this project idea is extremely impressive because Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the best place to build your tech career and have fun along the way. I'm Liz and today I'm super excited because in today's video, I will be sharing five unique, wonderfully awesome data science project ideas that are gonna help you explore data science some more, build your resume if you want to, have a working portfolio of projects that apply analytical thinking skills, and these will certainly help you out whether you're from a computer science background and you're curious about data science or maybe you're from a business background and you wanna learn business analytics and how to improve your own company or the company you're working for. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, just keep watching and with that, let's get into the video. So to give you a little bit of context about me, if you're new here, I'm so glad you found my video. I'm Liz, I graduated in May 2020 with a BS in computer science and a BA in mathematics, and now I am a PhD student studying computer science, and I also do bioinformatics research. So. This past year, I wanted to grow my channel, and so every Tuesday I upload lifestyle and whatever I feel like sort of content, and on Fridays I do computer science, technology, and advice related content. So if you really like what you see here, please stick around and subscribe, and let me know what you'd like me to cover in the next video. So with that, last week I did a video on the five things you need to know about data science, which covers a little bit of the basics of what data science is and why it's important, we know that we are interested in data. And for the next five unique ideas that I'm going to mention, we need to know where we can find data, where we can find data for free for our personal projects. So I'm going to list a few different resources that I found online for free so that you can get started, you can find the data sets that you wanna work on, and there will be no barriers for you. So the first one is the UC Irvine Machine Learning Repository. So this one has some of the classic data sets like the iris data set and the breast cancer data set and a lot of these training data sets are for people in machine learning artificial intelligence and also data science so this is a great way to get started you just search uci uh, data sets or uci machine learning repository and a bunch of things will come up it's really straightforward you'll just click on which one you like it gives a description of all of them and then you can download them in the correct format that you like you can always do a quick google search for a specific topic that you want to find a data set on. Also, Google has its own data set search. So just like you would go to Google and type like whatever you wanted to, if you type Google data set search and go to that search engine, it will pull up data sets for whatever search term you are thinking of. So I found that to be super helpful. And the other two free resources that I wanted to mention are the Google public data website and the Amazon Web Services Open Data Registry. So all of these resources I will link in the description box below so that you can get started on your data science journey. So now that that's covered, we can get into the five amazing data science project ideas that can help kickstart your data science journey. So my first idea is to pick something personal to you to track. So maybe you want to track something like your screen time, whether it's on your phone or your laptop or in front of the television. You could also track your sleep schedule and figure out what is the perfect amount of sleep for you to be your most productive self. You could also track your mood, see if there's times of the day that you feel happier or more sad, times of the week. You could track it with seasons, time of times of the year or times of the month, whatever floats your boat. And then also you could track your finances, which kind of sounds scary, but at least it's applicable to you and it can give you some perspective. Maybe you can find a way to save money and spend it on something you really want. So I take great pride in tracking my own finances with my own spreadsheet and my own graphs and analyses on that. So I find that to be fun. You could also track your walking or you could track, I don't know, how many times you check a specific website or an app. So these, the, the first idea is to pick something personal to you that you are curious about and then you can collect your own data and figure out where you wanna go from there. My second project idea is to utilize Google search terms. This is a website that allows you to search a specific word or phrase and you can track 
around the world where this phrase is being searched the most. And it will also give you data about the history and the lifetime of that word or phrase. So I was kind of curious and I'll insert a clip of me experimenting with some of these search terms. All right, so here we are on the Google Trends page. So I'm going to search fake news because I thought that would kind of be an interesting thing to look at. We can specify, maybe we want to see the last five years when it's been searched the most. And this is in the United States. So clearly it peaked in 2018. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And we can see the subregion where it's most popular to be searched and then related um, things that are also being searched. And then we can also see worldwide the interest over time. Here, worldwide, it peaked more in the 2020 area. And then here's the interest by region. So it looks like the search interest in Brazil for this time is the highest. And then Philippines and then Singapore. So these are related topics for worldwide. And then the next term I wanted to search is TikTok. I thought this would be kind of fun. Um, yeah, so the interest clearly continues to rise um, worldwide. Interest by region, Indonesia number one, then the Philippines, then Nepal, and then even more countries. United States number 10, let's go. Um, and then related topics here. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I was actually going to do Bitcoin next. So we'll go to Bitcoin. So this is kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely saw a peak here and it's still being talked about. Number one in Nigeria, interesting. And these are the related topics. It's funny that TikTok and Bitcoin are related um, topics. That's interesting. I could also change this to do Bitcoin um, topic. And then we could do cryptocurrency topic. So that we can compare the interest over time. So it looks like the cryptocurrency has a higher search value over time. And then this is more comparisons. And then I guess I'll do like one more. I kind of was curious about iPhone. So we'll see. Oh, it's got some ebbs and flows here for the last five years. Um, clearly, okay, so Vietnam, Ghana, um, and then where does the United States rank? Okay, number six for the iPhone search term, and then it has related terms. So that kind of gives you an idea of how to search different things in Google Trends. If you wanna even specify the category, or do a different kind of search, you can always specify that. Um, so instead of people just searching the web, you could specify it if what people are searching in YouTube or on the news or for images. And so I thought this was really fun and interesting. So if there's a topic that you are just super curious about, you can find it here, I promise. So overall, I think Google Trends is a great way to get started with data science. My next project idea is to choose a disease or a disorder to study. So some of the common disorders and diseases that have already been studied are skin cancer and breast cancer. And don't get me wrong, if you wanna do your own research on that and maybe bring some new findings to the data set, go for it. But you could choose something that hasn't been done before. Like you could choose to focus on anxiety or ADHD or diabetes. You could look at demographics data to see if certain variables and factors make you more likely to get diabetes or not. And so I thought this was really interesting. And the best part about idea number three is that it has a clear impact. So if you are passionate about a certain disease or disorder, maybe someone in your family is struggling with something, or maybe you're struggling with something, you could look into the data that's available on that using some of the resources I mentioned earlier, and you could perform analysis and find trends and see if certain things might lead to that disorder or to that 
disease. So this project idea is extremely impressive because it has an impact. And this is the type of research that gets published, it's the type of research that gets you grants, it gets you noticed, and it can catapult your career. So I think trying to analyze a disease or a disorder is a great way to go. My fourth idea is to analyze which social networks and which social apps are the most popular in 2021. So this could especially help you if you are a business owner or if you're working for a company because companies utilize marketing. And so it's really helpful to know who is using what apps, what age they are, and if you have your own customer base or you have your own friend group, you can see, oh, my friend group is more likely to use Snapchat over Instagram or Snapchat over Facebook. Maybe one group uses Facebook more than all the rest. Maybe another group uses TikTok over all the rest. So I feel like analyzing which social networks are the most popular, especially in the last year, I feel like there's been changes. Maybe there will be an app that appears that surprises you, but I feel like this is really uh, kind of exciting from a marketing standpoint because you'll get to see who's really using these apps, what countries are more popular on certain apps than others, and more things like that. And the fifth data science project idea that I wanted to share with you today, it's one that I feel like we would all be thankful for if all of us partook in this, and that is to discover what the trusted sources are for news and politics. So there are data sets that exist which survey and take data and make an assessment of whether a news source is super credible and everyone goes for it, everyone believes it, or if a news source is not credible at all. And I feel like if we knew about this, uh, at, at least as someone in America, if me and my friends and all of my family and everyone that I know, if we could all be more educated on what are the trusted, credible sources for news and for politics, that could help you know, guide the way we vote. It could help us understand the world a little bit better and hopefully, you know, create avenues for clear communication and peace rather than, you know, distrust or, you know, chaos. And so I wanted to include that. And if that doesn't seem that interesting to you, but you do have personal feelings about certain issues, you can always look up data sets on an issue that you care about. So if you have a belief about something, the best thing you can do to win an argument is to back up that belief with facts. Maybe you wanna learn about the wealth within your city or within your state or within your country. That's also something that could be interesting to find data on and then run analyses. I always try to think of putting myself into the data set. So if I'm looking at you know, my data from my state, I could think, oh, where do I fall within that? Am I on the you know above average, lower than average? Am I right in the middle? It's always good to bring it back to yourself so that you feel like this is related to you and you feel like you're getting something out of it. And then also it makes for great conversation later on. So before I conclude this video, I wanted to share a few things that I searched that I found were a little bit funny, but if they are interesting to you, definitely do your research on them because I'm curious about them. So if you search age to get blank data set, so you could figure out what's the average age to get married in your state or your country or around the world, the average age to buy a house, the average age to get your first piercing, the average age to have your first child or to get a tattoo. Or you could look up when I was first, you know, online searching, uh, something came up that was like life expectancy of women that have children and how many children that they have. So I thought that was kind of interesting because I never really thought about that. Um, so if there's something like that that interests you, I wanted to include that. You can always look up a question and then from there you can figure out what kind of data that you want to analyze. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time filming this video. If you liked it too, please like the video and comment down below. If any of these were really cool to you or if you have a new idea that I didn't think of. So with that, I will see you on Friday with another computer science tech related video and then I will see you even sooner on Tuesday with a fun random video. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead and I will see you very soon. Bye.